Hello and welcome. Today we're going to continue looking at electromagnetic induction. So at the end of our previous lesson we saw that when I move the south towards the coil we get a, neg a positive voltage. When I move it away from the coil we get a negative voltage. We flip our magnet. When I move the north towards it we get a negative. And if I take this north away I get a positive voltage voltage okay and remember voltage is equivalent to the current that is produced in the wire so the negative and the positive refer to the negative flow of current and the positive flow of current in the wire so here in another simulation we can maybe have a clue to see since we can see inside we can see the electrons so um, when we bring the north towards, the electrons move down in the front. When I move it away, they move up in the front. If I flip my magnetic field and I take my magnet to the other side, if I bring my south towards, it goes down. If I take my south away, it goes up. Now the reason that this happens is explained in Lenz's law. So we're going to now look at what is Lenz's law. Now if you remember correctly that when electrons move inside a magnetic uh, in a, a wire a magnetic field is created. So technically we have a second magnetic field created inside this loop. Now if you remember correctly we um, saw that when we move it towards, we can use the right hand rule for a solenoid. So let's say the current's going down. Okay, that means, and I want you to quickly try this as well current's going down in front. So my fingers are pointing down, and that means that this side is a north and that side is a south. So when I am bringing my magnet towards, Okay, we see that we've got a north and a south. So what happens is we look at our coil and if we bring our north side of the magnet towards this, Lenz's law tells us that we are going to induce a current and this current, I always tell them, this is my teenager rule, this current is exactly, acts like a teenager. This current being induced here is going to oppose whatever I'm doing with the magnet. So it's going to create a magnetic field that opposes what I'm doing. So if I'm bringing my north towards, okay, it's going to oppose any changes. So if I'm bringing my north towards, it wants to stop me. So how does it stop me from bringing it closer? It repels. Now the moment I take my north away, then it wants to change its mind again. So if my north goes away, it's going to change the direction of the current to say, no, wait, whatever you are doing, um, I'm going to oppose you just for the fact that I want to oppose you. And now my current is going um, in this direction. And if I use my right hand rule, okay, remember, don't be an idiot. You can turn your board around. Okay, north is going to be here. Let's just do it like that. And south is going to be here. So how is it opposing me now? It's attracting. Okay. So when I want to bring my north towards, it creates a north to repel me. And when it wants, when I'm taking my north away, it creates a south. So it changes the direction. This current has a mind of its own. And according to Lenz's law, we always induce a current that opposes any changes that we make. So if we bring our north towards, it wants to stop me from bringing it towards and it creates another north. If I bring my south to here, it wants to stop me, so it creates another south. If I want to pull my south or my north away, it will make an opposite um, field to attract it again. 
Okay, so the current always has a mind of its own and always opposes whatever change you want to make. Whether you want to bring the magnet closer, whether you want to take the magnet away. Now remember, a current only crea is created when there is a movement between the magnetic field and the coil. So I've just placed this to show you guys the direction here. It's not necessarily a coil like this. Think of that as like a toilet roll and it's wrapped around. Okay, so it's not a, a, a solenoid necessarily. It's just a loop like we just saw in that um, presentation. So now we're going to kind of find the direction of this um, current using Fleming's right hand rule. So it's very easy to understand in terms of a solenoid, but how does it work if it's just a single wire going through the magnetic field? So if I have a wire, here's my wire going through a magnetic field. Since we want to, we know that we're going to induce a current in this, we're going to use the FBI, but now we are creating a current. So we're going to use the right hand rule. Still F, B, and I. So we always shoot towards south. Okay. And when I'm pulling my wire up, the current is going to run this way. So when I'm pulling upwards on my wire, so I take my wire and I lift it up out of the magnetic field, the current's going to flow that way. And when I take my wire and I take it down, remember we shoot south. My thumb gives the direction of the force, so it's down, then my current points that way. So it flows in the opposite direction when we go down. Okay, so um, we use the right hand rule if it's a straight piece of wire, um, of the right hand generator rule. And we're also going to apply this inside a generator when we are generating an electric current. And we want to have, we have an object moving there. We have our magnetic field. Now we want to calculate. So we're calculating, we're lifting it up here. So it's going to go up on this side. We shoot towards south. Okay, so our current's going to flow this way on this side. And on that side, remember it's going up on the one side, down on the other side. So here it's going down. I shoot towards south. My force is downwards. So my current goes this way, and we can see that the current flows clockwise through the loop. So we use the right-hand FBI rule to calculate the direction of a the, uh, the current in a straight wire when I have the F and the B, and I want to get the I. So we use the right-hand rule when we're generating electricity, and we use the left-hand rule when we're making a force. It's a motor rule. So motor and generator. These two fingers, the F for the motor and the I for the generator, are the ones that we're looking for. So if I want an I, it's on the right hand. If I want an F, it's on the left hand. And you can remember it like this. Okay, left hand, right hand. Okay, so um, these are the two forces that I want to look for. Well, I want to look for the current on my right hand, middle finger. I want to look for the force on my left hand, and you give a thumb. Okay, so this is how you greet person. This is how you don't greet person. Okay, so um, yeah, maybe that helps you. So lastly, we're going to look at what eddy currents are. Now, eddy currents is very interesting. An eddy current is a current that is created inside a piece of metal inside a magnetic field. Now here they show us um, a piece of metal spinning, so aluminium piece spinning here, and they discuss in the textbook how this metal plate will spin for a few seconds and eventually come to a stop. But the moment we put a magnetic field over it, it stops immediately. And that is because there is a current being induced inside the, inside the metal. It creates a current. And since it's a conductor, those currents can kind of be very big. And this current is created to oppose this magnet. Okay, so 
as the magnet of this plate is spinning, I put the magnet over it. It creates a current inside the metal plate, opposing the magnet and forcing it to stop. There's a lot of applications to this. Um, in this textbook here, they speak about how we use it for metal detectors. Um, if you go to this part over here, they show you kind of in the other textbook how they use it. Okay, and how if there is an object, it creates a, another force. Okay, and then it creates an alarm. So there's a coil that picks it up and a coil to alarm. Okay, and that's kind of how it works. It also we can look at a car speedometer where we apply eddy currents. So simply an eddy current is a current that is induced inside a metal object when a magnetic field is around it. And those currents oppose the magnetic field by creating an opposite magnetic field. And we call those eddy currents. And it also sometimes causes heat in objects because the current is so high uh, because there's no resistance in a conductor or low resistance creating a very high current which builds up heat and sometimes like with transformers and things that is a problem and we're going to look at that when we get to that section thank you very much hope you enjoy your day